Hello everyone, welcome to today's session of Grade 12 Dramatic Arts Revision, hosted by the Amatkawe Collective, a non-profit organization that strives to create theatre for change. My name is Lance Lai August and in today's session we'll be looking at epic theatre and uh, Bertolt Brecht as a theatre practitioner, but specifically we'll be locating it within the Caucasian Chalk Circle, which is one of the first plays that he wrote. So in today's session, we'll be looking specifically at an overview of the play, as well as what the structure of the play looks like, and we'll be locating that within uh, an, a, a, an epic point of view. And then also we'll be looking at the themes that, that, remain, that, that, that come out of the play, as well as how the play is staged. And then we'll also look at the revision question, Specifically, question one from the Western Cape Education Department's Grade 12, September 2011, Common Paper, which differs in structure from how the CAPS curriculum sets up their papers, but it is a very helpful question on the, uh, non, um, nonetheless that uh, wants you to have a, a thorough understanding of epic theatre and also to link it to whatever play you are studying under the realm of epic theatre. So let's get straight to it. In terms of the Caucasian Chalk Circle, the Caucasian Chalk Circle is a play written by Brecht when he was in exile in America, and this was in, 1990, in 1944. Uh, the play itself is based on the biblical story of, of Samson and the baby. Um, I think the biblical story is where Samson had uh, two wives and there was a child involved, I think, and the story was about who the child needs to go to and in samson's wisdom or, or the story was about who is the mother of this child and in samson's wisdom samson said that the child needs to be cut in half and each person can have a half and then the mother of the child or one of the women uh said no it's fine the other person can have a child or have the child and this proved to samson that she was indeed the real mother of the of Solomon. Sorry, that she was the real mother of the child. In this specific play, uh, it's something similar, but instead a chalk circle is thrown around the child, and the first person to pull uh, the the child out of the circle is the one who wins the child. In terms of the play's structure, the play consists of five scenes or episodes, and this is very different because it's not referred to as acts, because it's a Brechtian play. Uh, uh, also, all of the scenes are self-contained. They don't follow a pot particular you know, narrative or um, narrational order. They don't flow into the next scene, and they don't build up to the next scene. And it's episodic in nature, which means that they don't follow a chronological order. You already know that episodic, uh, you know, episodic scenes are already a, a characteristic of epic theatre and the work of Bertolt Brecht. The play itself has a very, you know, play within a play structure that helps to promote uh, the use of Brecht's epic theatre techniques. And also it's didactic in nature, which means that it has a strong model and it's a story that, that wants to teach a lesson. Um, and the lessons are very much, you know, contained in the themes. And he, in this particular play, he achieves that, you know, this didacticism through alienation, which means that there is techniques to distance the audience from the action that is happening on stage. As well as the fact that there's an episodic nature to the play, it means that audiences don't really connect or become that you know indulged in the story because there's no fixed story and then also the use of narration and also yeah uh, the use of narration is further used as a tool to distance the audience from the play because the narrator speaks to the audience reminds the audience that they are watching a play so um the play is very much uh, an example of epic theatre. Epic theatre is a dramatic form that's intended to provoke rational thought rather than create an illusion. It's theatre that made you want to think, and it isn't theatre that, you know, wanted to create a spectacle. Continuing with the structure of the play, and also more, uh, more broadly to link it to epic theatre, Brecht played with this notion of the fourth wall. So realism, with realism, the fourth wall is there, whereas with epic theatre, the fourth wall is not. And this is evident when the characters, you know, directly addresses and acknowledges the audience. And also 
um, within this particular play, the narrator speaks to the audience. The singer speaks to the audience. Uh, in terms of the prologue, uh, the prologue, the very first scene in the play, it sets up the play structure. And you will recall that it is a battle between fruit farmers and goat herders about who gets the land. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, the fruit farmers get the land. Also, there is strong circularity in the play uh, because the ending returns to the pl where the play started. Um, and Abrecht uh, uh, was very clever in how he did this because it meant that the audience received the model of the play without having watched it. Because the first scene in the play already sets up first scene in this particular play or the prologue already sets up what the play is about it's about who gets the land or who wins this child um the scene about the child you know the battle for the child it, 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 it only reinforces what the audience already knows so some of the themes that, that come from this play is, of course, communism and capitalism. And this is also tied to this idea of ownership and belonging. Um, it's the idea of who originally, whoever originally owned the piece of land should get it. Or is it whoever sh can best use the land should get it? Communism would argue that... Um, Communism would argue that whoever or, uh, originally owned the piece of land should get it. However, capitalism would argue that who ca whoever can use the land best should get it. Um, within the context of the story, the goat herders, they had a claim that they were there first and therefore they should keep the land. However, the fruit farmers argued that they could put the land to better use. Um, also, later in the play, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the Caucasian chalk circle, uh, who does this child rightfully belong to? Um, yeah, and you'll remember from the play that the child doesn't go to the mother, the child goes to the other one because, uh, to the other character because she, you know, took better care of, of, of the child. Um, yeah, once again, who does the land rightly belong to and who does the child rightly belong to? In terms of other themes that come from the play, um, the play looks at the notion of sacrifice, which is very much what the mother of the child needed to do. Um, it also looks at the, the precarious validity of the law and the notion of, of, of justice. It also looks at humans' behavior toward their fellows, and this comes very strongly out with the character um, that, is, that is classist. Uh, and then also um, the the singer at the end of the play who also plays the role of the narrator very much sort of in a song concludes what the play is about. And it says, take note of what men of old concluded that what there is shall belong to those that are good for it, children to the maternal that they prosper, carts to good drivers that they are driven well, and also valley to the waters that it yields fruit. So just to bring it back to the notion of sacrifice, um, the character of, of Grusha uh, is the character which Brecht uses to show that people who make sacrifices will be rewarded and the, the tide changes in their uh, favor. And because of her courage and sacrifice, she transforms into the mother of the child and her love for Simon is thus also rewarded because of her act of, of, of sacrifice. In terms of the precarious validity of, of the law and thus also the notice, the, the notion of justice, this is very much played with through, you know, the character of Asdak, because Asdak um has uh uh, uh, uh been considered as a trickster figure who turns the law upside down, but he risks his life to make a difference. And through his character and actions, Brecht shows us that this is how justice will come. And also, um, yeah, this is how Brecht plays with the idea of, of, of justice. But also uh, where the validity of the law comes in is with, with Simon, um, Shav Shavaz's character, uh, you'll recall that Simon is a soldier who falls in love with Grusha uh, and she promises to marry him when he returns uh, from the war. But there's uh, while he's away at the war, she's forced to marry another man, Yusuf. But 
what Azdak does is he mistakenly annuls Grusha's marriage to Yusuf, and Simon and Grusha gets is allowed to 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 um, get married after all. So also Brecht plays with the idea of of classism through the character of um, Natella Abashwili, who is a central character in the play. And she is the selfish wife of the governor, if you will recall. Um, she uh, leaves her baby, Michael, behind. And she's more uh, caring of packing her dresses than actually saving a child. And then after the Civil War, she tries to get Michael back in order to reclaim the governor's estates. And she highlights the major themes in the play, which is justice, family, uh, uh, class, uh, warfare, as well as religion. Yeah, she, because she repeatedly abuses the poor and, and shows no concern for the less fortunate. And that is how Brecht shows us that... Um, that is how Brecht shows us that theme of human behavior towards their fellows or classism. In terms of staging, uh, when you staging a Brechtian piece or a piece of epic theater, uh, lighting is very important. And Brecht believed in flooding the stage with bright white light the entire time, whether it was day or night, whether it was a warm summer day or a cold, a warm summer day or a cold winter day. There was always just bright white light on that stage. Also, in terms of set, the set was very minimal. You could see the working and you could see any changing to the scenery in full view in front of the audience. And then what is significant what is significant was that the staging was bare and you would use only portions of scenery or single pieces of furniture to suggest whole locations. So a stage block, a single stage block on stage would represent hypothetically the, the lounge or it would actually be the lounge, or it would be the chair, but that same stage block in another scene would be the table, um, that sort of thing. Also, chairs, benches, and tables were used as themselves or as building blocks to represent other objects. The very same table and chair could be converted into a car. That is basically what that is implying. Also, the actor would frequently change character uh, or costume in front of the audience, which reinforces the idea of alienation. What this means is that you would have a single performer playing five roles in one play, or you would have um, yeah, uh, uh, an, a single costume change would represent that. And that reinforces the idea of alienation, because the audience is now forced to, okay, I'm not viewing you as as Natella anymore i am now viewing you as grusha so i couldn't the audience can't build a connection because the audience is constantly seeing you know two different um uh, points of view from two different characters and this mobilizes the audience into action or this reinforces a lesson rather than allowing the audience to indulge into into what is actually being presented so that brings us to the end of the explanation for the Caucasian chalk circle. Now we're going to look at the question at hand. Um, the question, as I mentioned, comes from uh, the grade 12, uh, 2011 common paper for dramatic arts that was set up by the Western Cape Education Department. Um, question one uh, goes around epic theater. Um, answer this question if you studied either... <laughs> Um, Caucasian Chalk Circle or Mother Courage or Kana Eko Heistu and I'll be doing all of those plays with you in this revision session. Obviously not all of you would have done all of these plays uh, but I'll be doing each play to, to, to cater to everyone. So let me just get my little pointer on the slide. Cool. In Brechtian theatre or epic theatre there is no preparation towards illusion. The audience is always made aware that they are watching a play. The actors playing the parts and the technology of the theater is visible. Uh, the focus uh, is on the social and political events on uh, in the play. So there is no preparation towards an illusion because they are trying to reinforce a lesson. Um, the audience is always made aware that they are watching the play uh, through alienation and through um, yeah through alienation and through narration. Uh, the actors are playing parts. Um, multiple parts at such and the technology of the theater is visible which means that all of the changes happen in full view of the audience and the focus is on the social and political um, events in the play which is um, very much uh, part of the perfriamdungs effect or the um, didacticism in the play 
So in this question, you have to explain each brechtium term or phrase. The verfremdingseffect, the parable, the epic, the narrator, and also what historification uh, is. So the first term is a verfremdingseffect, and you already know that it is a distancing effect or an alienation effect. Um, that is used to prevent the audience from indulging in the play, but rather to provoke them into action uh, to change what they did not like. The second, uh, I seem to have skipped one. I didn't do the parable, which is weird. Uh, the the next one is the epic. I promise I will get to the parable. Oh, it is there. I remember. I did it. The next one is the epic. And the epic basically uh, refers to a play that spans a great deal of time and moves to different places. It often has a very large cast. And also the focus is more on the storyline than it is uh, on the character. And two facts would have given you two marks or one mark each. Or, you know, a solid explanation would have given you two marks. Also, the narrator... Uh, so basically the narrator is a tool that is used uh, to help distance the audience from the action and it reminds the audience that they are watching a play. Also the narrator is a character that speaks to the action in the play. It, it, it gives the viewpoints uh, of the characters and, and sometimes speak to what the character thinks and does not say. Also it, in the, in the narrator or narration is a tool to help bridge the vast time and space in an epic play. And then also uh, historification. Historification is basically a tool that sets the play in a non-specific time and space. Thinking back to the Caucasian short circle, reading the play, you wouldn't say that it is stayed, that it is set in 1944 because there are no references to it. Uh, it's also an alienation technique uh, uh, to help distance the audience from, from the action because the audience can't put a link a particular time and space to, to the action. And the plot is set in the there and then and not in the year and now. So that is an indicator of distance. Year and now is closer to us versus there and then, which is further away from us. And then also the one that I seem to have been, that I skipped, I apologize for that, is parable. Parable just basically refers to a simple story where um, there is uh, an apparent uh, it's the, uh, it's, it refers to a simple story, but actually in the story there is a deeper moral lesson. So that brings us to the end of today's session. Um, today's session was actually very helpful. Um, it gave, gave you a solid introduction to epic theater, and it's sort of the principles of epic theater that we will apply to each of the other plays, Kana Ekoaistu, and also Mother Courage, which is also a Brechtian play. Uh, and Kana Ekoaisu is the next uh, lesson that we'll be doing in the series. Uh, this was a session of Grade 12 Dramatic Arts Exam Revision, hosted by the Amakawe Collective, a nonprofit organization that aims to create theater for change.